You are going to need a few more materials for this lesson. Firstly, a pen to ink with. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. A biro would be great. Biros are really good for cross-hatching and shading. I can also talk through some other pens that you can use. Here I've got some fine liners, calligraphy pens, a fountain pen and a paintbrush. You can get fine liners in lots of different sizes and they're often waterproof if you want to paint over the top. But the width of the line mostly stays the same when you draw. Pens like calligraphy pens and fountain pens are harder to use but you can easily add more depth to your drawings by adding more or less pressure. You also need to make sure you have waterproof ink if you want to paint over it. Brushes are also great for varying the width of the line. You can use a brush with ink or some paint. I'll be using my calligraphy pen in this video because it's my favourite. Starting at the top of the worksheet there are four rectangles. In each of these rectangles we're going to use a different shading technique to fill in the box from light to dark. First we will use hatching. This is simply drawing lines in one direction over and over. Starting at the darkest end, all the lines will be really, really close together to make it almost black. As we go along, I'll space the lines out more and more until we stop them all together, leaving the other end white. The next box is for cross-hatching. It's similar to the last one, but the lines go in several directions, crossing over each other to make a crisscross pattern. Start at the dark end and fill it in until it's almost completely covered, then slowly work your way along, leaving more and more space until it's completely white at the other end. The last two were relatively quick ways of filling in a lot of white space. The next one takes a bit more time. This is called stippling, and we're going to fill in the box with lots and lots and lots of little dots. Start with lots of dots to make one end almost completely black, then spread them out more and more to make the gradient. I've sped this video up a lot as it took a while to do, but it gives a really nice effect. For the last box, you can use whatever pattern you like. You could try circles, stars, squiggles, or any other shape. I'm going to use some squiggles. Once again, start at the dark end, then spread the pattern out until it's white. Next, we have four boxes. We can use these to practice drawing different lines, patterns and textures. Think about the textures you may want to use in your comic. I'm going to do some lines with a fine liner. Some lines with a brush and ink, so you can see the difference. A swirl using the brush. And a leaf pattern. Lastly, practice shading the circles using the techniques that we learned earlier. Imagine our circle is a ball and there's a light shining on the ball. On your worksheet, there are arrows to show which direction the light is coming from. Where the light hits will be really bright, but the opposite side of the ball will be in shadow, so I'm going to shade the other side here. See how much more depth this has added? They're really starting to look 3D. Once you've finished this worksheet and had a play around with different pens, go on to the next video where we'll start inking our own comic.